So welcome everybody. I hope you're doing fine. I would like to start uh, the webinar uh, with a quote from our CEO, Peter Sharper. We want to enable our customers to tell a story in a different way. We want our products to be close to the action and catch every tear and sweat drop. Never miss the unique moment. So uh, thank you very much for joining. We have today a guest speaker and I'm very proud that David is joining. Uh, we have a very long con working together. He uh, has some nice products that he's gonna show today. So David, thank you very much for joining. Um, thank you, Christian. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the collaboration with SignView. And I first want to talk uh, a little bit about DreamChip and then our cameras, the RCP, and then the Barracuda, and then the roadmap. So let me introduce you uh, DreamChip. We're based in Garbsen next to Hanover. Uh, then we have a site over here in Hamburg where I'm working with 25 engineers. Then we have another site in Braunschweig uh, next to Volkswagen and another one in Bayer. So all in total, we're 120 uh, people, a lot of engineers, and uh, we were doing a lot of OEM products for the film and broadcast market. And since five years now, uh, we're selling our own cameras and uh, we're doing IP streaming devices as well. So that's what we're gonna talk today, more about cameras, but I give you a little introduction about the Barracuda, what we sell as well. So our cameras, we actually have eight different models. It's getting every year one or two more. Um, we have five full HD and three UHD one. We have a new model, it's called the Atom 1 SSM 500. It's a high speed one, and we're going to talk about this camera today as well. And it's very important all our cameras, they can do HDR in HLG and PQ. So if you have some uh, future broadcasting in HDR, our cameras can do it. Uh, you will see it. So, and all of our cameras have an HDFDI output. This is a quote from our customers. Please have a look. So as you see, um, they could actually match our action cameras against the huge Sony HTC 4300. And they could do it because we integrated in all our cameras a multi-matrix. And this multi-matrix allows us to actually um, grade the image to the Sony HTC or to any other broadcast camera. And so we have a perfectly match regarding the colors and uh, we try to catch up regarding the dynamic range. So as you see here, and David will explain later on, um, you have the full control on our small cameras with a multi-matrix. And the workflow with our cameras, it's actually quite simple. So either you have the Sony, the SignViewer, Skahoy RCP, or we have our own software that we uh, ship with a camera. It's a free software. And this is how you can control actually our cameras. And the Atom 1 Mini, if you now have a look at the video, is actually such small. It's a very, very small little camera. And again, this camera has a multi-matrix inside. You have mini HCSDI output and it has a power hyros. And there you have uh, RS485 and uh, yeah, power for the camera. And it's very lightweight, it's 45 gram and has a rolling shutter. And it's just three centimeters by three centimeters by three centimeters. And uh, then we have another version, it's called the Atom 1 Mini Air. We just 
from the Atom One Mini, we just got two cables out to the top. So we could at least have the half of the size of the camera from the back. So you really have a very, very small camera with a wide angle and very lightweight and uh, it has a rolling shutter as well. So then we put this uh, little camera in a waterproof housing to actually uh, that your customer um, can work with this camera outdoor. And uh, then we have our Atom One. That's uh, this camera over here. So again, a very small camera. It has two HDSDI outputs and a gen lock. And then we have the same high-risk power connection on the back. And you have the possibilities to have on the AUX board a motor drive. So as you see here in the video, over here there's this AUX board and below there is our motor so you can control the iris and the focus with a sign view RCP for example. And uh, the at one 4K Mini 7 is the same uh, plugs we have over here. So you have two HDSDI outputs. Uh, then we have a gen lock and the power and the aux port and the camera of the size is like this. So if we had before the Atom 1, the size is a little bit bigger and just to have the full picture, that's our Atom 1 Mini. And uh, the 4K has the smallest sensor. That's the reason it has a very small lens at the top of it. And uh, we have another version, it's the Atom One 4K Mini 11. It has a two third and you can put actually B4 lenses on it because we have an adapter from C mount to B4. So you can um, work with your already maybe bought B4 lenses, B4 zoom lenses. So you can work with this camera um, with a B4. And again, this has a rolling shutter. And the last one, it's a 4K 16. And this camera um, has a global shutter, a huge dynamic range, and it has a very big sensor, one inch. As I said, we have this nice little, very strong, powerful motors. Please try them out. We really worked hard on it because in the past we did use some other motors from second company now and had a lot of problems with it. That's the reason we actually made our own motors. Please give it a try. You will see it's really fantastic. And then we have a waterproof housing for our 4K Mini 7. And um, as you see over here, it's actually a quite small waterproof housing. It's just around uh, the camera and you can go in the water pool. It's going to go to 25 meters. And as I said, we have a new camera, um, the Atom One SSM 500. It's our super slow motion camera. You have on the back five HDSDI outputs and the first camera, which is very important, it's, you can control over IP. And uh, regarding the sensor, so it has a global shutter. You can run it up to 500 frames. Um, we have two different modes, so you can have it on the SSM mode or trigger mode. Uh, as all our cameras, they are doing HDR. And we have uh, four SSDs built in and you can record 60 seconds of footage in 500 frames. So afterwards you have tons of data and a lot of things to record. And uh, so this camera is as well very small as we're doing small cameras. And we have uh, a B4 mount and a C mount ready. So the SSM mode, it's if you connect it to EVS or any other storage device, you can run it with the SSM mode or in the trigger mode. And that's the other version you can run this camera. So as I said, we have a C mount and a B4 mount ready. And uh, if you have a B4 zoom lens already on the bench, you just connect it to the cameras and you're ready to go. And then, um, David will explain you today a little bit more about the control of the SSM because you can control it over the sign view system. And we're going to have another webinar next week with Gahoy 
where they uh, will explain everything about their solution with the SSM 500 and in total with all our cameras as well. Um, and then we have Antelope who can also do uh, the RCP uh, with our Atom 1 SSM 500. So the workflow with our cameras, it's actually quite easy. You just uh, plug it in and then you have the pro video software and you can connect it with a computer and uh, control everything on the camera or you use uh, the Vico box and this gives you the possibility to work with a Sony RCP. And uh, this is just another uh, way around because we have actually our software is open source on the camera, but uh, Sony make their own pro protocol. That's the reason we got the Vico box from some Russian people we had uh, two weeks ago in the webinar. And uh, then you have the workflow from Skahoy we're going to explain everything into detail uh, next week. And then we have the workflow from SignView and David will now give you a fully uh, introduction about what SignView is capability. David, that's your show. Thank you, Christian. So I'm going to uh, share my screen. I will steal you the... Please go ahead. Meter. I guess you see it now, uh, should be in the slides, right? Yes. So uh, CyanView, we, um, we started with, um, I would say mini cameras. So we are not, uh, I mean, this is quite familiar uh, to us, but, uh, but we evolved now and, uh, and really we focus on uh, bringing uh, camera control shading uh, to most of the cameras that don't have their proper RCP. And so definitely with uh, DreamShip, we have something. Just for the people that know us from uh, different uh, angles, uh, we're active in, uh, in a couple of fields. Uh, mini cameras, specialty cameras, it's uh, definitely one. Um, PTZ and robotics, we started to work with a couple of companies last year uh, on some of the, I mean, big events in there. Uh, and there's definitely something interesting with uh, with mini cameras for that as well that I explained just right after. Uh, we have RCPs also controlling uh, some color correctors, uh, digital cinema cameras and ENG for camcorders. That's a bit out of uh, the focus here, but uh, with ENG and digital cinema cameras, we went into remote production and, uh, and controlling this kind of cameras uh, remotely over uh, the internet over uh, 4G is, uh, is definitely interesting for a POV as well. So you can, uh, on the very uh, high, um, high end productions, uh, for example, a remote um, beauty shot or something like this. Uh, and on smaller productions, you can actually, with the quality that uh, you have on the DreamShoot cameras today, you can actually use them as main angles uh, just to put uh, on remote places uh, at home or remotely controlled. So there's definitely something uh, interesting in there. Those are the, the, the kind of cameras that we control. And uh, you see on when you're looking at specialty angles, mini cameras is definitely there. You can put that on, on pole. We're working with pole cam as well, uh, behind the basket and so on. So those are all the, the, the things where we have that. And I would say a, a large part of what we are shipping today is for mini cameras. Uh, actually, if we look at uh, higher end productions and you're familiar with the, all the Sony RCP that you have there, we have nothing to bring. Uh, but when you're talking about specialty cameras, that's where you end up with a lot of different, uh, I would say RCP or something that, uh, that replaces it like software, these kind of things. Uh, and this is where we, uh, we kind of um, bring a good solution for these productions. That's with one RCP, you control as many cameras as you want. Uh, on the picture there, for example, at Le Mans, uh, and it was a good bunch of dream ships that were there inside the cars. We were controlling like uh, 30 onboard cameras, um, six uh, PTZ in the, in the garage and a couple of uh, um, track cameras all from one RCP and you just mix the, the cameras, the models, the brands, uh, everything, it doesn't matter. Um, so all the cameras we mix is mini cameras. You see there on the top left, uh, PTZ. Uh, we're starting now with the SSM 500 we're going to talk about, but, uh, but a bit of uh, high motion there, um, color correctors. Whenever a camera doesn't have the proper um, processing built in, Usually people just would add the color corrector. So if you don't have black control, then you, you do that with the color corrector. And we integrate that as well with the same RCP. 
And um, as I said, we did a couple of robotics and we're now developing uh, the control of gimbals, uh, mini robotic heads or integrating with one, uh, I mean, those that exist in order to bring uh, pan and tilt to the, to the mini cameras as well. Uh, we have a couple of projects also uh, where we are involved in uh, RF wireless and one of the applications, for example, is drones where we control the gimbal and the mini cameras. Uh, remotely over RF system or 4G as we have our solution as well. We're also developing our own uh, core corrector, but I would say this is a bit uh, outside the scope here uh, because uh, the video pipeline that you have in DreamShip cameras is quite uh, complete and everything is in there. So they, they look beautifully out of the box. Um, so how it works uh, when you connect a, a DreamShip camera? So if you take these cameras, they are serial, they are RS485, so you need to convert that over IP. And uh, we decided not to go with uh, just out of the shelf uh, interfaces because uh, our CIO, our camera interface, uh, is actually covering a lot of protocols, a lot of different serial uh, here were RS485. Uh, but you'll see that we also uh, will benefit from this uh, because we can control different accessories that actually complement uh, a mean camera. So it's our own kind of IP to serial interface and uh, it's universal because so far all the serial cameras that do exist, we were able to connect them on this. Uh, so it's really uh, universal. Uh, and there from outside the CI0, we're on IP. Uh, it's PoE, so it will power the camera, it will control the camera over just one cable. And whenever you are on IP, then you put the RCP on the other end and you have full control on one camera or as many cameras as you want because you just put uh, all of them on the same network and it works. Um, the same CIO has actually multiple ports. We had two and we're developing now a three port version that's going to be released pretty soon now. Uh, and so with multiple ports, what can you do? You can connect a gimbal, for example, and control it over SBUS. Uh, and we are just added um, lens control. So there are multiple lens uh, that are going to come in the, in the future, but we already have ENG lens control, which means that Christian explained that there is an adapter uh, for the DreamShip camera. So you can put um, an ENG lens, a B4 lens, and we do control that as well. So from the RCP, you're going to be able to control the iris, but also uh, zoom and focus. And so now that you have a gimbal to provide pan and tilt, we have a lens for zoom and focus. We can uh, definitely interface with joystick panels uh, so that from there you can have a camera operator to control the pan, tilt, zoom and focus. And from the RCP, you will have the iris and all the camera controls. So again, it's just one box, one RCP, and then you can use VSCA panels. Uh, we have USB panels with different uh, kind of uh, joystick panels that we interface um, that are kind of, uh, I mean, very inexpensive today. And, uh, and from there, we can control um, all the features of the camera, but also motion. Um, typical application actually in a, in a higher end production, tier one production, uh, we're, again, we're covering the specialty cameras, not the main cameras. Um, that would be over, I mean, the, the, the fiber would go to the field, uh, you would get, get a switch, go to the very various interfaces that we have, and from there we can just connect the um, super motion camera, the, um, a few atom cameras. If you have a PoE, a PTZ, you just put it on the same network as well. Uh, we would usually have only one RCP because you're constrained in terms of space. Uh, and so we control all of them from one RCP just along your sunny RCP or your Grass Valley RCP. Um, and we also interface with um, the routers. And in these situations, it can be VSM, it can be a Cerebrum, but it can be an Everts uh, router uh, or switcher. Uh, I will show with the, with the demo later on uh, how that works. But basically, whenever you select a camera on the, the, the router panel, the RCP will track. So if you have, like, let's say you can even get, get one Android. To, I think the, the most we got was like 80 cameras on, uh, on one RCP. Uh, in that case, you just select the camera you want on the router panel and the RCP tracks. It follows and you it always um, show the camera that you're actually seeing on the monitor and you're controlling. As well, you can select the camera on the RCP itself and then it will control the router and it will switch automatically that. So just the same way as you would have like for uh, regular Sony RCP, you press on them, you have the preview. Uh, if you switch camera on our RCP, it's going to preview and call that on the, the preview monitor. Uh, 
as I said, usually, let's say you have a PTZ that doesn't have black control. Uh, you can route the signal through um, a core corrector. It can be a VPRO8, a 48110, uh, AJ, something like this. And, uh, and whenever you change the black, it's going to control the core corrector. Whenever you change the iris, it's going to go straight to the camera. So for the uh, video engineer, vision engineer is going to see that as a full feature camera. Uh, some of the features are going to go to the camera head. Some will be applied in the core corrector. So it's really a, a full workflow. Actually, it's not just a remote control. Uh, the remote control is part of our architecture, but we're already developing a solution so that uh, video engineers can take any kind of specialty camera and make it look um, the best as they can. If you take a small portion, it's actually quite similar if you have a couple of mini cameras that actually might be your main cameras, like on the concert, you might have that on the piano or on stage. Uh, in that case, you might have a video of Blackmagic uh, for the router, we integrate that one as well. And instead of having that, the big VSM panels, you will have a stream deck. Uh, I will show you after, we uh, were doing that also, we just integrated with stream deck so that you can use that as a selector for your RCP. So when I say uh, we can have like maybe eight cameras on the RCP, you have your stream deck on the side, and you select cameras from there. Talking about the new SSM500, we're just actually now uh, integrating it. Um, we, again, there are multiple remotes that do exist and we wanted to have uh, different solutions to, uh, to provide. Uh, the same interface is going to control a camera remotely uh, from an IP network. So that doesn't change. Uh, but we had to um, to get a replay controller. And so um, the various options we chose uh, are the, um, the Shutter Pro because a lot of people uh, have it, it's inexpensive. And depending on the kind of productions, if you already have an EVS uh, server or a kind of high-end server, it can be Everest, Grass Valley, uh, all of these kind of servers, uh, your goal is actually to be able to take the, the shots and uh, send it to the I mean to the, the slow motion server uh, as soon as possible. So the only thing you need to do actually is trigger cue back to the beginning of the shot you want, hit play. You'll get the slow motion playing back, and then it's dumping in the in the server. And from there, you can put your mark in, mark out. You can play it straight on there. These kind of things. Um, you do whatever you want, but you don't need actually to control a lot of things on the the camera side. Uh, if you're again working with this kind of servers. Uh, now with the, um, these kind of cameras are getting more affordable than it was like a couple of years before. And so uh, small productions can actually just keep the server, not have a server at all and just play back out of the camera directly. Uh, in that case, I mean, the Stream Deck is still a good option, but we also integrate it with uh, GL Cooper. Uh, they're providing um, off the shelf remotes. And so from there you can as well trigger, you can queue back and, and do your slow motion replay. But now if you're on uh, those high-end sports production, using, uh, uh, I mean, an EVS is definitely the, the, the norm today, uh, depending on where you are, but for sports, this is the case. And so, um, I mean, during Belgium as well, we just got one, we received it yesterday and the remote this morning. So we, we didn't finish the, um, the implementation, we actually just started there, but uh, uh, we are going to have, um, the integration with their um, software, which means that you will not even need uh, the, the, uh, another remote. It will be able to, you will be able to do the replay completely from the LSM remote. Uh, they have different possibilities to do that. And so um, whenever you want to trigger queue back from the Dreamship camera, we're going to interface uh, with the EVS server so that uh, you will be able to do that from the EVS remote. So in that case, what do you need from us? You will need the RCP, which actually is going to interface the EVS to the camera and uh, offer all the painting options for the, the camera itself. So this is our solution somehow to, uh, with the new SSM500. Uh, I, we do believe it's the best option because, uh, I mean, for, for the high-end productions where they do already have a server in there, um, they don't really want to have something on the site. And if you want to have a remote, then I would say the Shutter Pro is definitely inexpensive. It's very easy, it's very convenient, uh, and you can use that whenever you don't really have a slow motion server. Uh, this is a recent addition of what we developed. So you see here two new products, Neo and Rio. Uh, Neo is a network IO, it's, um, it just provides um, input output for. Um, um, 
let's say tally, let uh, camera preview, these kind of things, but it also has an interface with USB. So uh, if you want, for example, to have the Shutter Pro anywhere on the network, you just connect it on the, on the Neo and then it appears in your, uh, your architecture and you can use it. So you can select it uh, and assign it to uh, whatever camera you want. But what I want to talk about is Rio. Rio is for remote camera control and it's uh, control over whatever channel and currently today we're developing that a lot with the current situation uh, with the I mean the lockdowns everywhere in the world is to be able to control cameras over the internet or over a 4G uh, connection. How does that work? Let's say I mean we're used to the, the cellular systems like view TV, view, mobile viewpoint, TV West, all these kind of things where you connect a camera, you have a backpack and there you go. Um, Today, you don't have camera control. And so Rio is basically a companion product with this kind of streaming solutions uh, where that can access the internet through an access point provided by uh, the unit or by its own uh, 4G dongle um, or Wi-Fi. And so whenever you have uh, internet access, we have a relay system that uh, will just take any comment from the RCP and send it to the camera. So it's very handy for ENG camcorders, uh, for sports, news, these kind of things. But uh, specialty camera, mini cameras, if you want to put a beauty shot on top of a building or something like this, it's just basically a plug and play solution today. And you will get uh, control on the camera. It makes sense also to have uh, control on robotic heads, uh, pan and tilt, because then you can change the frame. And now with the motors that DreamShip are providing as well on the lens, this is uh, control that you will have remotely as well on focus on Iris. Um, all those kind of things are possible today. We also have Remy. Uh, Remy is a bit different than Rio. Uh, it's, it's really a remote production when you have a full production, uh, multiple cameras, a lot of things, uh, maybe different venues, and you want to control this over the internet. Uh, so that's still, still possible and uh, many cameras are going to be involved. Uh, but I would say uh, whatever works in Rio is probably easier to understand right now. Rio is like our CIO interface. It has two ports, serial ports that we can connect uh, mini cameras uh, from DreamShip, but we can connect the gimbals as well. We can control an ENG lens, uh, all the accessories that we developed. Um, the thing is that now it has a 4G dongle option. And so with that, you can just control the camera everywhere. Now DreamShip is also the door uh, Christian is probably going to talk a little bit about that after the, the Barracuda, which is sending uh, video. Um, so you just put a Barracuda, a couple of DreamShip cameras, and Rio will provide control uh, remotely today. Uh, in the future, I know that the Barracuda will also um, send control. So we'll just interface with that unit. And for DreamShip cameras, you will be able to uh, control them without even uh, need it's Rio. Uh, but if you want to use a Barracuda to just uh, control any other camera, and it can be an ENG from Sony, uh, from Panasonic, from um, uh, or cinema camera from Canon, uh, you just connect them on the Barracuda, you will get the video. And if you put a Rio, you will get control on these cameras as well. How does that work now with, uh, with DreamShip? You put the Rio there, you we have two ports, so you can uh, connect a, a robotic head or a, a gimbal. You put the camera, the radio will be connected on the internet. We have our relay solution in the cloud and the RCP, we can also uh, interface with one of the, the joystick panels we support. Uh, and there you go, you have uh, paint control, you have uh, pan and tilt control on the camera remotely. It's not more uh, difficult than this. And so even though we have some other products like the um, core Corrector, uh, Neo, I think for DreamShip cameras, the basic products that we, uh, we have today, so universal RCP, we also have frames so that it fits the same as the regular RCP size in the, in the trucks. You see that at the, at the top, we have some space that we can actually put at the bottom and uh, we're now developing some accessories. Uh, for example, uh, uh, joystick so that you, you will be able to iris the, um, the cameras with the, with the joystick there if you want to, uh, to use multiple RCP and one RCP per camera. Um, or uh, we, we might have like a small um, joystick for PTC cameras or these kind of things. Um, I, I would say that today, the reason we didn't go with a, with a joystick for the iris is that when you're controlling uh, many cameras, a lot of cameras and specialty cameras, mini cams, uh, a lot of cameras that are very different uh, the joystick doesn't work uh, just because if you want 
we were on Le Mans, suddenly it's sunset, you need to, uh, to put gain on all the cameras or iris them out. Uh, you're going to, uh, to, to push the iris to open uh, on the first camera and switch to the second and then very quickly you are at the, at the end of the joystick range and so you need to move it in, uh, in all directions. When you, whenever you switch from one camera to another, the joystick actually doesn't show you anymore the, the, the position there. So it's very um, convenient when you have multiple RCP, one pro camera. But in our situation, we have something that works actually very, very well uh, for specialty, a lot of cameras on one RCP. And, uh, and the joystick option that we'll get now uh, will also allow you to have basically one RCP per camera. These we, I mean, this year, uh, obviously, NAB, IBC are going to be, um, to be out of the our focus, but, um, but we got uh, probably the year last year at, uh, at NAB for control solution generally and, uh, and best of show at IBC for Rio for remote controlling on that. And this is something really that now um, with the current situation in lockdown, Rio is, uh, is being shipped uh, to a lot of places now to control cameras remotely. So with this, I would like to do uh, maybe a short uh, demo of um, of what we, um, we do have. So this is our uh, configuration interface. Uh, I have currently four cameras. I have a Sony, I have a Panasonic PTZ, an Atom one, uh, an SSM 500. And so um, if I show you the, so this is our configuration interface on the top right. Um, it's a little bit messy, but, uh, but yeah, basically that's the RCP I have here. You will be able to see the, the same over there. Uh, I have an Atom One uh, camera here, and so if I, for example, um, disconnect the camera, just to show you, uh, you will see that the um, this is the picture of the, uh, the the camera. It's actually right there on the interface. If I switch to the the configuration, just to show you how it works, uh, I just add a I click plus. I add the camera. I put a number, a name. I choose from all the protocols that we have. We have Dreamship, we have Marshall, we have Panasonic, uh, AJ. So there are a lot of cameras out there uh, that we do support. Uh, and so the Atom one is actually the first one in our list. It's also one of the, the first cameras we integrated. Uh, you just select the, the camera, you select which interface. It can be a USB connection or it can be one of our um, IP interfaces. Uh, I did connect it on port one. We have a second port at the front. It's connected on port one there. And so I select port one, and this is all you need to do actually to uh, configure a camera. From there, if I connect the camera, you will see that the picture is going to, uh, to come now on the interface. So now I have the picture. We just detect that the camera has been connected uh, and we, uh, you see that the picture was a bit green in the beginning. Uh, whenever the camera has been booted, we just send all the parameters so that it's uh, it will come back exactly in the in the same situation it, it was um, it was when you would paint it. If I remove this camera, put another model, uh, I will just get back with exactly the same picture. And um, yeah, so you see now that the camera actually just turned green. Uh, the same on the RCP. We are detecting that the camera is there. We're sending all the parameters to the camera, and from the RCP, you actually know that the camera. Uh, is actually properly detected and it's working correctly. So now if I change the iris, um, so there is no iris on this camera. It's actually changing the gain. It's, uh, it's in auto right now. And so I can now have control on this camera. Uh, there is one thing that, uh, that I said in the presentation that we're uh, integrating with the, uh, with the switchers. And I have now here, uh, I will show you the camera. The, the, the Sony just have a, a picture of everything. So I have a Blackmagic uh, router here. Uh, I have the Sony camera, which is there. I have the Panasonic on the top. Um, I have the SSM 500 over here. I have the, the Atom one here. So whenever I change, so I'm now on the Sony, you will see at the bottom right that actually I'm just erasing, uh, change the iris of the Sony camera. I can uh, change the, the, the white balance of this camera. Whenever I switch to the second one, uh, you see that now uh, I'm to the PTZ. And if I change the, um, it's actually gain, I'm now changing the iris or the gain of the PTZ camera, the, the Panasonic there. I want to do white balance, which is something that I need to do right now. I uh, just press on white balance and I have it. Uh, if I go to the uh, next camera, this is my Atom one, which is here. And I can even put a color chart here to show you a couple of the, 
the, the features that we have with this camera. So uh, you might see even there on, on the left, I have uh, a small um, vector scope there. And, um, and so, as I said, we have iris control. So as I s explained, when I switch cameras, it's actually changing the black magic all the time. If I can uh, change a different source from the black magic, it's actually going to change the RCP. So now, uh, if I select another camera, you might see it there on the right. It's, uh, it's following the, that camera. So back to the, the Atom uh, camera, I have my core chart here. Uh, I have the auto button. Uh, it's going to just change uh, auto exposure. If I remove it, I have, if I have an iris, like with the, the lens option, I can control the iris by default. Here, there's no iris, so it's actually controlling the gain, uh, but I can change the shutter as well. Um, I can change the, so the, the black, the black balance, white balance, saturation, uh, the gamma is here, detail. Uh, and if I go to the, well, I've seen files, I can save as many scenes as I want. I can recall them. Uh, I can even save all cameras at once. If I have 10 cameras, I just press save all and I save them all or I can recall them or I can paint one and call back the settings to another camera. Uh, in the paint menu, we have the, um, the gamma with the, the core gamma. Um, we have saturation, detail, uh, denoising there, uh, matrix, uh, the multi-matrix. And so this is something that I wanted to show you. I can uh, turn a, a gate effect on the multi-matrix. And so with that gate effect, I can basically select any. So you will see on the, the vector scope over there, it's actually turning there. I can select any vector I want. So let's say I want to change the red. The red is a bit off. Now I can change the the U and saturation of that. So I can put a lot of saturation and change the U of this to have it a bit more um, purple or orange. And uh, how does that work in the field when you have a mini camera and you want to match your main Sony cameras? The, um, the difficulty is that the green of the grass might be off, the red of the shirt. It's not like all the colors, the, the, the camera looks good, but not all the colors are going to be off. But definitely your main colors, the blue of the sky, it's very quick actually to just pick the color that you need uh, and then you can change the, the, the UN saturation um, of that color. So now if I want to be the, put more saturation and get a, a better red of that or uh, in the other, it's actually very quick and I can do the same for the other colors. Um, we have knee, we have white clip, um, not skin tone, and of course white balance. Um, we have OSD when the camera support OSD. So uh, I said, for example, we have the PTZ here uh, I go to the OSD and I click on menu and then I can uh, change all the settings of the camera itself. I can navigate the menu of this and that would be the same for all the camera that uh, do have menu options. Uh, exposure index, shutter, uh, clear scan for the camera to support it, uh, which we have here with the, the DreamShip. Uh, and we have tally. So tally, uh, the, the, the camera itself doesn't have tally here. We do have it on the, on the Panasonic. But uh, even though there is not a tally light, uh, you see on this picture here that actually um, the, um, there is a tally option uh, in our system. Back to the, the atom there, I can turn it on and off, but that would uh, definitely come from a, a GPI or TSL. Uh, the thing is that you can have tally on our interface here but we can also provide tally on the GPI that we have on the ports. So it would be possible for you to just uh, put an LED wherever you want or, um, or just send a GPI signal that you uh, connect to, um, to your system. And in, uh, in the custom, we have a couple of things like uh, we can store uh, the current settings as a fact, uh, I mean, default of the camera. So let's say you want to paint the camera, you want to have a, um, the, the picture that you need, and then you need to use it in a, in a helicopter, in a shot where you cannot connect uh, the whole system to have paint control. You can still paint it, you can save that inside the camera and whatever the camera will reboot, it will just keep these, uh, these settings. So, uh, and lens options, uh, it's not something we have here, but if I go back again to the, to the Panasonic, that's where I can move the camera around from here. Uh, I can, uh, also use the encoder to uh, zoom in and out. I can uh, recall positions there. Uh, so I, I might have just different uh, option to do this. Uh, and that will be the same uh, with um, a gimbal that would be on a mini camera like the, the Atom one. Uh, or if you have an ENG lens, you will be able to, uh, to change the zoom and focus from the lens itself. So that's uh, an overview basically of uh, all the settings we have um, 
on the Atom one. And then the last thing that I, uh, I could show you here is the, um, the super motion. So this is the, uh, the view of the uh, SSM 500. Uh, sorry, we didn't have really have time to, uh, to, to put like uh, a nice demo with, uh, with super slow motion and water and these kind of things. Uh, so it's going to be um, a, a bit boring, but um, I have the, the stream deck, the, the Shutter Pro here. Uh, I have the JL Cooper remote over there. Um, and I have the stream deck here actually that I didn't show, but so the, on the stream deck itself, uh, I can select uh, the cameras that I have here. Um, and again, when I select camera here, the RCP will track and I will be able to change the, the settings there. So back to my super motion camera. Also for a PTZ, we might have cameras, we might have scene files, uh, we might have positions that you will be able to recall from the, the stream deck it, uh, itself. But for super motion here, uh, how does that work in sports if you have, let's say, soccer, football, uh, and uh, you're capturing a, a goal or something like this? Uh, let's say I have a first action that I want to uh, to have. I will trigger this, and you see that now the the picture is uh, is stopped. Uh, now I can put a second action on on the camera itself. So uh, if I let's say I have a goal, I'm going to cue this back. I'm going to hit play, and this is going to be a recording in the server. But now if I have a second action and I see it at the same time because I have second sig signal with the live. Uh, then I can trigger a second time and I might even trigger a third time for a, let's say a view on the on the public or something a shot of the public the flag whenever I'm done by the with the replay of my first action which might be a goal I just free this and uh, and there we're on the well I free two times and there we're on the second action so let's uh, let me do that I have a one I trigger it then I might have a second action I trigger it I might have a third action I trigger it uh, and when I'm doing playing this one, I just free it and I'm going on the second action. I cue back, I hit play and I have my replay of the second action. I free it whenever I'm done. I have the third action and then I hit play and, and that's it. So we can work with uh, one, two, three, four blocks uh, with the camera. We can change that from the, um, the action here. We can change blocks. We can change the, the frame rate. Uh, I'm at 500 frames per second right now. But you, you just basically need three buttons, uh, trigger, cue back. I can use the jog, I can use the shuttle uh, to just cue back, I have my play button. Uh, and the thing is that usually you're going to play that back uh, in slow motion to uh, a replay server like an EVS, Grass Valley, or Evert, uh, Dreamcatcher. And when it's in the server, that's actually where you are going to put that on air or um, or make your clips and manage all this. So we didn't really want it to uh, develop like a, a full solution to uh, uh, to put some in points, out points, and these kind of things because uh, there are better remotes like the AVS uh, LSM remote, which did that much better than what we uh, would be able to do. And um, yeah, and we think that it's uh, it's a much better solution like this. So Christian, I think that's. Uh, uh, you can you just show uh, back again your shuttle pro because as you were using the shuttle pro uh, the actual recording is in the camera so if you're using the EVS and you have the four phases out then it's recording on the EVS oh uh, yes so you're right uh, you're right oh. but uh, but actually not everybody is going to use the super motion mode so uh, the SSM 500 is a super motion where it's actually uh, sends four phases. Uh, and in that case, you take four channels on the EVS server and, um, and you don't need actually a replay controller. So you just need, I mean, we, we have nothing to do in there. Uh, so that's just like a regular four times super motion. But if you're uh, using the, um, and in that case, you are, you're not going to be able to run the camera at 500 frames per second uh, because it's four times you will be at 200 or 240 in the US. Uh, if you want to shoot at 500, uh, you're still going to, I mean, at least in sports, you're still going to, uh, to have um, a slow motion server uh, just to do your replays. Yeah. And so you're still going to play back through an EVS server, uh, even though the slow motion is not going to be done by the EVS server. It's just going to record, and from there, they will roll it uh, to, uh, to the director. So, um, so in such a case, uh, what you want is to push the clips as soon as you can 
from the camera buffer to the to the EVS server, so that you can uh, release the, the the camera, you can record again. Uh, but I mean, today with the, the the memory size that we have, with the four blocks, uh, it's not really a concern. Uh, but still, the, the the thing is that whenever there's a goal, you need to trigger, you need to queue back to the beginning of the action, you play back, and this is what is going to be recorded by the EVS server. And as soon as you hit play, you can basically on the on the EVS server be on hold for the director and ready to roll it whenever they want to do, do the replay. So this is how a lot of people are going to, uh, to do it, not really by using the, the buffer of the camera. Now, if we're talking about lower tier productions where they want to save even the cost of one channel on server, uh, this is something different. And this is why we also have actually the, um, uh, this one here, I think I, uh, lost there, but uh, but you still have the, the slow motion there on the right. And uh, if I trigger this from that, we have a JL Cooper that uh, that will give you a, a bit better options uh, there to, uh, to to queue back to have uh, different blocks uh, with the status. So you, you might not see, but the, the advantage of the D JL Cooper is that you have multiple blocks. You might have an LED with uh, with all the blocks there, uh, and so you know which one is recording and these kind of things. Uh, we might have that as well on the um, stream deck uh, to show the, these kind of things. Again, that's for lower end productions uh, where they want to, uh, to skip the, the replay uh, server. But if you have an EVS, definitely you don't want to, uh, there are way too many buttons on that. Uh, the only thing you need is trigger, queue back, play, and wait until the end of the replay so that you can free the block and everything else is usually done with the DLSM remote. And with the integration that we have with uh, EVS, you will be able to have either one remote and be able to trigger the camera queue back and then switch back to the camera control to the EVS, or actually to have two EVS remotes, it's one for the camera control, one for the server. So that's the way they work and uh, will be compatible with this. Great. Um, I forgot to mention, if you have any questions, please uh, put it in the chat or in the question and answer. Uh, we're going to answer the questions straight away or at the end, as you like. Yeah, so that's um, yeah, it's basically the workflow. So I give you the lead now to, uh, to finish the presentation, if you want. Yeah, let me just uh, have one more uh, talk about your picture of the SSM 500. Uh, we designed it like this, and it was, uh, we were showing it at the IBC, uh, like the picture you were showing it. Um, and then we wanted to produce the actual camera. And it turned out at Corona that we couldn't make it because we are manufacturer over here. Uh, we do everything in Germany. We do not doing it somewhere else. And uh, there were two main reasons why we changed it, actually uh, the design of the camera. The one reason was actually uh, the ventilator company who's doing uh, the ventilation in the camera. They uh, said we cannot produce anymore because we have to work now for the hospitals to make ventilators for the breathing machines. And then we had to rethink the whole design of the camera and that's the reason uh, now we have a much more cost effective uh, SSM 500 and it's not any more um, round it's uh, like you see it in the picture before. Yeah that's the, the one I found on the internet <laughs> but yeah you're right uh, anyway I couldn't find the other one yet so. Yeah, it's quite fine. Um, so now you just had the full picture of the sign view system uh, as I said, we're working together very long uh, and uh, it was always fantastic. Your products are working very nice and we would love to go further. And as you see, we're going further and further and uh, we're gonna have some new cameras uh, this year and next year. And I think uh, SignView is always a good partner for us. So David, thank you very much for explanation. And uh, if you have some questions, um, there's already one popped out for the 4G LTE remote connection and control. Do you use network bonding? I think, David, this is something for you. Um, so uh, we don't use network bonding we yet. Uh, we might. Uh, but you have to understand that for the, the connection where 
not doing the, the video. So that would be in the Barracuda, that would be in the live view system. We're doing camera control. So there is no latency actually, I mean, very few compared to the latency you will get in the video. Uh, I mean, last year at NAB, we did the demo uh, from NAB to a server, which was at that time in France back to NAB. It was like 200 milliseconds. Uh, most of the time you'll be below 100, uh, which I mean, depending on the, it might still be a concern. So you might not be able to do robotics and have a tight zoom, uh, uh, I mean, um, shot and do pan and tilt to, to follow an action. Uh, it's not the goal, but so we were not taking care of the, um, the video. So it's for us, it's very low bandwidth. It actually costs nothing. Uh, and so uh, the reason why we, uh, we will add bonding is that uh, whenever you, some of the applications, for example, we have is control uh, cameras on the motorbikes. And there you might move from one network to another. And so you will lose control. While if you put two uh, SIM cards from two operators, uh, the bonding will help you uh, go from one network to the other without losing control. So this is one of the reasons. Uh, the other one would be you're on Wi-Fi network. You don't know if that's uh, going to work. You have a 4G as a backup. Uh, whenever one network will drop, uh, it might choose uh, the, the second one. So there it makes sense to, uh, to make bonding, but you have to understand even though it's the same kind of technology, uh, it's not um, the same as the, the challenges that they have with video uh, where every single pixel needs to, uh, to make it to the other end and so on. For us, uh, camera control is, uh, is something which is different, uh, which has its other challenges because a lot of uh, protocols from cameras actually don't play nice with latency. Uh, so or Rio is actually controlling the camera locally, close to the camera. And so uh, we're not uh, subject to latency problems because we, uh, we master the whole, um, I would say network between the RCP and the Rio. This is our own stuff. So we can deal with the problems on our side and between the Rio and the camera, then there is no latency. So uh, then we don't uh, depend on the camera protocols. It can be any camera. So I don't know if that answers the question. You might, if you have something else, just uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to put something else. But, uh, but yeah, it's a different concern with, uh, with the video. But that was a full answer, I guess. Uh, then Luca was asking something, uh, David. Um, maybe I can ask, answer first, and then you can give it a go. So uh, can I create a profile to upload the Atom camera? Um, uh Yes, definitely. Uh, you can save uh, scene files just like on the Sony RCP. So if you uh, uh, if you use this color chart here, and uh, and you spend a bit of time uh, on site with the, the proper lighting and everything, and you you match it, you can save it and reuse it. Uh, the thing is that um, the next day uh, the lighting might be different and these kind of things and it will uh, uh, it will not necessarily match uh, anymore because you have different sensors they have different spectral response um, uh, response curves uh, sensitivities and so um, if you have a perfect matching you change the lighting it doesn't work anymore so we actually our uh, our goal and we're not there yet but our goal is actually to achieve this to have a, a proper matching with all cameras this is also why we have our own core corrector it provides uh, a bit more flexibility in there but using this core chart in the future uh, will we will have uh, built in the system some profiles for the camera to uh, to better match sony uh, a grass valley a panasonic an itachi camera and uh, and a way um, to assist you uh, to make easily uh, the profile yourself. So you, you can use the chart, for example, put it in front of Sony, put it in front of your Atom camera, and then uh, we'll have the, the possibilities there to, um, to make it look good uh, easily. And it's, it, I mean, uh, it will help a lot of the, the small productions as well, uh, because that's where they actually use these cameras mainly today as main angles as well. Uh, not really a specialty uh, for something that might just show up one time in a in a show uh, when you're on the lower uh, end production. They really rely on these cameras and they need to have a proper picture. And the sensor, the camera itself definitely looks good. Uh, so the matching is something we want to address uh, as well. And this is part of uh, core science is something really that we uh, we have a lot of interest. We did a lot of, um, of work on that uh, already. Nothing released yet, but uh, I mean, but, uh, but yeah, definitely we are, we'll have more in the future. Uh, and something maybe to explain also with our system, uh, as I said, it's an architecture, it's a lot of software. Um, so it's all 
basically the, the, the way to IP and everything is, uh, is kind of the, the core of what we do. Uh, we also believe in, uh, in uh, upgrades rather than just replace the hardware. Uh, so uh, we have like a two, three releases a month uh, with the new features and functionalities. So when you buy your system, you basically will have something of much more value in, in a couple of years because we don't, you know, we don't really intend to uh, throw them away and replace by new versions. Uh, uh, like the, the CIO interface that I have here, it's an IP2 serial interface. In 10 years, it will still be an IP2 serial interface. Uh, and it's keep adding new features. Now we control gimbals, we control that. We'll, uh, we're going to add, uh, um, I mean, uh, new protocols all the time. So um, this is really something that's, uh, that, that, that we're quite happy with because a lot of customers uh, just didn't know at the beginning when they bought our system that they would have so much out of it uh, just after. And so it's, uh, it keeps updating. You just have a web page. So the, the, the page I showed earlier, uh, you click on the admin, you see all the release, you click on one and that's it. It will update the RCP, it will update all the interfaces, it will update everything uh, by just clicking on that. And if you test a new version and you have something that uh, doesn't work, I mean, it's software, it's, uh, it happens all the time. We don't want to hide that. Uh, if something doesn't work for you, you just click on the version you had before and you're back exactly to the same situations you had. So it's a, it's a very quick way. It takes like uh, 30 seconds and you're back exactly in the same situation. All the firmware are going to be downgraded. Everything is, uh, is following this. So uh, we really took the, the, the broadcast um, uh, constraints into, uh, into account when we designed the system uh, so that you can keep on with the updates. You don't have to wait. Uh, you can apply them if you have whatever uh, that doesn't work the way you want and you had it right in, uh, in the, the previous version, you're back to the previous version in, a, in one minute. And just to mention it, uh, you know, we are doing the same. So uh, we're releasing always every two months, at least an update for all our cameras. Um, so in the future, you know, we're always trying to do, uh, now we implemented HDR and uh, we always want to have this product very reliable and very strong and that you see in the housing and uh, most of our cameras they only come back if a car is crashing it or something. So usually they're working horses. Um, and uh, I can say the same for the sign view system. I have it here on my desk uh, for a long time and we always uh, try out new things and it's working. So we are very proud to work with a partner which we can say it's a working horse and not having something that you have to buy in two months from someone else. So, yeah, as I can say, it's uh, very nice to work with Simon together. Um, maybe uh, just to follow up, um, if there's no question, I have uh, just some few slides and there is a church next to me. I'm very sorry for that ring balls. Um, we're gonna do a webinar with Polcam. And uh, we're going to use um, the SSM 500 and uh, having the poll cam. And please join us with this webinar. It's the 25th of June. And uh, we're going to explain the whole system with poll cam together. And uh, then let me show you some product applications we do. So we do reality TV, maybe, you know, Ninja Warriors, we're working very close together with Animal Shine. They're using our cameras quite a lot. Um, then we're doing, of course, sports, as Dave mentioned. Uh, we're doing a lot of soccer, ice hockey, Formula One. Then we were together in Le Mans. Um, yeah, as you see on the left side, that's a picture from Polcam. Um, and so we were very sad uh, that uh, the Olympics didn't happen this year. Hopefully it will be next year. And then we do cricket. We have now uh, in India, we put it into the stump and in the helmet, in the grass, in the tunnel, just where you don't actually fit big broadcast cameras, you can take our cameras. And uh, same with hockey. So we have it behind the goal in the helmet next to the coach. And, you know, if you have such setups where you have a lot of cameras, you can easily 
all integrated in one RCP and control it from there from with the SignView system. So it's actually quite an easy one to uh, have our cameras on the field and have multiple angles. And nowadays, if you now watch soccer in Germany uh, the last two weeks, there are not many uh, viewers in the stadium anymore. So they're now trying to get some new angles and uh, yeah, they, they're using our cameras uh, just uh, to get more viewing attention and uh, which they actually had. So they had the records of viewers the last two weeks. <laughs> so on eSports, that's a big field we're working on because the players, uh, they want uh, to play the game and don't want to be disturbed from the light. So they are using our Atom One camera because they're very good at low light and have a globe shutter and so you really can see the player and they're not lighted like bright, uh, like in a stadium. And uh, we are on a lot of news and remote productions and as you see here together with SignView as well. And we're doing cinema application. There is uh, our 4K with a globe shutter on this 3D uh, Rick and uh, they're coming a lot of feature films out there in the very near future where you see as uh, one feature film I not allowed to tell the name but there are blue people walking in there so they bought a lot of our camera and they could match it actually with a big uh, Arri cameras and then we are on concerts uh, very important our camera don't have an internal buffer uh, you straight have the HDSDI out and that's the reason a lot of people use these cameras in concerts and uh, sometimes actually the the players they don't see each other or if you're in a symphony orchestra they don't see uh, uh, each other so they're using our cameras that they uh, have the same beat and working together and then a lot of uh, House of Worship. This is during Corona. We had a lot of interest over here. And uh, then, uh, as you may have heard of, we're having this nice uh, Barracuda product. Uh, it was winning uh, product of the year. So as you see here on the front, we have five HDSDI inputs. And you have um, above this, the Hyros connector, which is the same we have on the cameras. So you can actually power our cameras, five of them, on the Barracuda and get the RS485 signal in the Barracuda. And then you can stream this five signals, five HD up to P30. So we can do all the P25, 24, and you can stream it over Ethernet, uh, as you see on the back of uh, the device. So this is the Ethernet. And you can put a SIM card in there um, and you can stream it over LTE. And if you want, you can record it at the same time on an SD card. Or if you have an SSD, you can plug it in over the USB 3 and you, you can record it as, uh, in the uh, external from the Barracuda. And we have audio input and output as there as well. So here you see all the specs uh, we have in the Barracuda. It's ready to ship. And last week, uh, my colleague Stefan was giving a webinar. If you want to listen to the webinar, um, it's actually in all the emails we sent out. And there is some another question. Yes, uh, we're gonna send, uh, so the question is, is it, possible to receive the recording of this presentation? Yes, there's a recording and we're gonna send out next Monday, the next email for uh, our webinar with Kahoy. And on this email, you will receive a link where you can download this um, webinar. And next slide um, is um, a workflow we just uh, shown over here as you were hearing the bells. Uh, next to me, there is uh, this church and they have a very old organ. And we were broadcasting uh, with five cameras from the church to my desk. And from this desk, I was uh, 
transporting it first to Facebook and then we figured out the sound quality is uh, not as good. Uh, so we changed to YouTube and so we were broadcasting this uh, four times to YouTube. And uh, we were using the encoder and decoder um, and was quite successful. So the production roadmap, um, we have uh, working together with BR Remote in the past and now you see uh, the product. Uh, so there is a micro pen tilt head and this micro pen tilt head, uh, you can uh, look into detail in this at the 18th of June, we're gonna do a webinar with BR Remote. So as you see here, it's a very small, um, our Atom 1 Mini, as I showed in the camera, it's this size. So the remote head is uh, a little bit bigger and uh, that fits on our mini cameras, but even with a motor drive on top of it and with our 4K. And uh, as I said, everything into detail with BL remote like I uh, had now with David the session, we're gonna do at the 18th of June. And uh, it was actually used last year at the Americans Cup and uh, was quite successful at the boats. So yeah, please join me for this webinar if you're interested. And then we're gonna um, have a little Zoom camera. A lot of uh, people were asking, uh, please make a Zoom camera. And we were having uh, a lot of hard times because if you have fixed focal lenses, you get a much better picture quality. If you're using a zoom, there are coming a lot of issues uh, regarding picture quality. And if you can compare the cameras with the big broadcast cameras, you don't want to mess up the picture with a bad zoom. So that's the reason we're searching very long time for a good quality zoom. And now we found one and that's uh, the output of it, the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. It's going to be released uh, at IBC, haha. <laughs> so uh, somewhere in September, uh, as IBC is not there. So it's a three times optical zoom and you can control iris. It's very wide angle, it's very light. And, uh, and then of course, uh, together with SimeView, you can control it as well. So if you have some questions regarding how I can use the SignView system or the Skahoy or Sony or how I can control the uh, Atom camera, I made some videos. Um, please have a look at Vimeo. And um, then we are of course on Facebook, LinkedIn, in all the social media. Uh, please have a look over there. We're always trying to get a lot of pictures from our customers uh, over there and showing how people are using our cameras. And uh, last but not least, we have a nice web page and you can get our camera from many different resellers around the world. Please go there, chat with them and get a demo. I'm a big fan that you test our cameras against any other small or big camera. And, um, get it out, uh, a test, 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 and then see the results yourself. And please contact the resellers you find on the Atom webpage. And that's some reference we did uh, in the past. So uh, some of the big customers were working together. And as I said, we're doing uh, in this June, we're doing three more webinars because uh, in the past uh, four webinars, we had a lot of attention and like today, and we're gonna do next week with Skahoy, then we're gonna do with BR Remote, and then we're gonna do a webinar with Polcam. And last not but least, do you have any questions? Please write it down in the chat or in the Q and A or write down my email and send me an email or write my colleague Stefan an email and uh, we try to answer it very fast. And uh, if you don't have any questions longer to me or to David, then it's only to say thank you very much, David. It was a pleasure. And uh, I hope you're all safe out there. 
Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully see you next year at NAB or IBC and uh, have a good evening or a good start during the day. Thank you very much. Thank you as well, Christian. Au revoir. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.